Good morning, First Baptist Church. How are we doing this morning? Ain't it a wonderful day? It's a wonderful day to come praise the Lord. And so we'll start out with our first song. Stay standing. We'll do a responsive reading this time. We have it on the board, or you can look in your bulletin. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I tell you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go to prepare a place for you, Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We ask you to be with Pastor as he's on his way to teach a service at another church. Lord, we ask the blessings upon the people here today. Bless this service. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the snow. Lord, we bless you. In Jesus' name.
a beautiful song. But this time we're going to greet one another, but I, gotta, I, got, I want to put something, take about five minutes, and as you greet one another, I want you to ask them what their prayer requests are. And know that other people's prayer requests, and you can pray together right there, or you can take it home and pray with you there. So let's take the next five minutes and greet one another. All the kids come up. Come on down if you're a young one. Does that mean tell you? my helpers man these are some blessed men right here man uh, for one I just want to say thank you guys for the support of, of accepting me as a youth minister I'm still learning my way with this but as the weeks progress I get more and more excited and uh, trying to have fun with this yeah trying to have fun with this all right so we got everybody up here Step up here. This gentleman right here, I, uh, I got a really good chance to really know him that well. He didn't even realize it. Yesterday they showed up a little late to youth group, and when he comes in, he's apologizing. He, he, he keeps saying sorry. And I'm like, this event is for you guys, you know? You don't, don't say sorry. And he, and he keeps saying sorry, and, he, and I'm like, when, when, the, when the event was over, it just made me appreciate how he's been raised, his humbleness, his respect, and uh, great job. Great job, great job. But I gotta pick on you. I gotta pick on you. So, uh, 
you know, with my walk with Christ, when I was your age, it was hard for me to hear God's voice at times. You know, I, I, maybe it was because I was too young, maybe it was because I was immature, but at times it was hard for me to, to hear Christ's voice. I couldn't see his face, um, but he was there. He was there. And as I moved through my life, you know, there's obstacles. You know, and sometimes I would have to make a decision when I was a kid, and sometimes that decision would set me back where I would have to take some steps back and do it all over again. God just protected me in that situation. So, wait a minute. She's got, she's got the mother's feelings. Come over here for me, please. Would you blindfold this gentleman for me, please? Okay. Hey, plus, he's an athlete for what I heard, too, so this is going to be really fun. It's going to be really fun. All right, so, can you see through that line? Good, perfect. Okay, stay, stay, and that is it. All you guys over here, have a seat right here for me, please. The guys that actually stay, you guys stay up there, you too, you guys stay, everybody else have a seat over here. Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat over here, have a seat over here. You guys, <laughs> you guys have a seat. No, he looks comfortable. You can stay. You can stay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this path, okay? We're going to create this illusion. We're going to call this game the walk of life, okay? You cannot see a thing, correct? So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an obstacle course, okay? You're going to have two voices in your head. One of those voices is going to give you the correct path. The other voice is going to be a 100% lie, okay? If you make the correct movement, you will progress through the course. If you make the incorrect movement, you will step back and redo that obstacle again, okay? Does that make sense? All right, so right now, I just want you to relax, <laughs> and we're gonna set up this obstacle course, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to stand up you to hold that stick up just about right there. Actually take one more step up. That is perfect. Okay. Music. All right. So your resources. two more here, okay?
Guys, that is the game of life. That is life in general. Sometimes we cannot hear God's voice, but the more you walk with him, he's going to continue to show himself to you guys, and you're going to be able to hear his voice loud and loud and more and more clear. Okay? Guys, thank you guys so much. Bow your heads, join me in prayer, please. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for these youth. Father, continue to mold their minds, continue to direct them, continue to show yourself to them, and continue to uh, let them hear your voice, Jesus. We bless your name today. In Jesus' name. Feel free to stand or sit or come join the instruments or flags as we sing this morning. <coughs> together the next two slides. Praise the Lord. Praise him from the heavens. Praise him from the heights. Praise him all his host. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars. Praise him you highest heavens.
send you waters above the heavens. Yeah. 
thank you that if we have you, we can never be lost because you are the way. I thank you that you are the way of love and the way of healing and the way of wholeness and the way to the Father. We bless you, Father, for including us in your family, not as servants and slaves, but as children and heirs. So we stand as a people, Lord, loving you and giving you praise and joining the voice of creation as they praise you today. In the name of Yeshua, amen. You may be seated and the children can go to Sunday school. You get to listen to me one more time. Today we have a special speaker. And as Pastor Simon Virgin comes up, let's give him a warm First Baptist greeting. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first, I'd just like to start off by uh, thanking God for giving me another opportunity uh, to be used in this kingdom building. And then to my brothers and sisters at First Baptist Church, I thank you all for opening up your arms and your hearts to receive me once again. It is truly an honor and pleasure to be able to worship with you this morning. And last but not least, to my good friend, Pastor Ross, for always thinking about and praying for Wayman Chapel and myself. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. And to all my brothers and my sisters, I want you to know that I love you. I, uh, I, I, I truly do. Uh, I say this at my church every Sunday as a reminder so that nobody leaves without knowing that I love them. Uh, you are my father's children, and that alone makes you special to me. But if I ever say something or do something that doesn't quite reflect the love that uh, you're anticipating, then I ask that you simply pray for me, because my ultimate goal is to point you to one whose love will never let you down, and that's the love of Jesus Christ. So if you would, let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to worship your holy name. Now, Father, as I stand before you and your people, Lord, I'd ask that you would hide me behind the cross. I ask that you cover me in the drippings of your blood. Lord, I pray that the words that come up out of my mouth will be first touched and anointed by you before they enter the ears of your children. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Um, you know, I uh, just kind of get off get off course just a little bit, and I just want to let Brother Alvis know how, how, uh, how blessed I am to see you doing what you're doing. I remember when Alvis first got to Billings, Montana. Um, you know, it, it is truly awesome to, to see you uh, moving in the direction that God has purposed you to be in. And it's also an honor and a blessing to see First Baptist embrace you and give you the place and the platform for you to continue to cultivate what God has placed inside of you. It is awesome. Um, and just piggybacking on some of what uh, Brother Alvis uh, taught on the day, uh, I'd, be sure, I'd be sure to bet that each and every one of us that have made it this far in life would all agree that sometimes life gets a little bit challenging and difficult. Uh, disappointments happen, setbacks occur, uh, families struggle, innocent people get hurt, and sometimes health and wealth don't always add up. Which shouldn't surprise any of us because in the word of God, in John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus tells his disciples to have peace in him because here on earth you will have many trials and sorrow, but take heart because I have overcome the world. This text reminds us that no matter what type of difficulties and obstacles we face in life, 
God wants us to keep our faith and trust in him because he has already overcome it all. Speaking of faith, how many of us would agree that it can be difficult to keep our faith in check when times of storms, when, when storms of life come raging in unexpectedly? Uh, at times when storms come raging in, it can feel as if God is nowhere to be found and life has just gone off course. And I'm sure that's how Jesus' disciples must have felt that day when they were out on the waters and the raging sea came racing in. So if you would, please turn your Bibles with me to the book of Luke chapter 8. I'll be reading verses 22 through 25. Actually, I may go to 26. Luke chapter 8, 22 through 26. It says, one day he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A windstorm swept, over, swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves, they ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, who is this then that he, that he commands even the winds and the waves, and they obey him? In this text, we find Jesus and his, and his disciples in a boat headed towards the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And as they cross the Sea of Galilee, Jesus falls asleep and his disciples encounter a terrible storm. As the waves begin to get bigger and stronger and the wind grows more violent, their boat begins to fill up with water and immediately his disciples are fearful for their lives. How many times have we find ourselves in situations like this? Maybe it wasn't a life and death situation but more or less a situation where we felt like our lives were gracing out of control and the trouble that we were faced with seemed too big for us to solve. I would imagine that's how Jesus' Jesus's disciples felt that very day. The storm was big and scary, and they didn't know what to do, so in a last-ditch effort to save themselves, they decided to wake Jesus up and ask him to save them. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus woke up and spoke to the storm saying, peace be still. And instantly the waters were calm, the wind died down, and the storm was over. Then Jesus did something that was quite interesting to me. Jesus turned to his disciples and asked them, where is your faith? Without giving much thought to this text, it would be easy to ask the question, why were Jesus' disciples afraid? I mean, they did have Jesus on the boat with them, right? And why did they wait to the very last minute to turn to Jesus for help? Now, if those are some fair questions to ask, wouldn't it also be fair to ask, how many times have we acted just like Jesus' disciples have? I mean, why do we go through so much stress, worrying and struggling, when we could simply turn to Jesus and ask him to calm the storms in our lives. Personally, I believe the answer to that question is found in the question that Jesus asked his disciples. In verse 25, Jesus says, where is your faith? What I like about this text is that Jesus' disciples were doing exactly what God had called them to do, and yet they still experienced major storms in life. Which leads me to believe that even though we may be doing exactly what God has called us to do, that doesn't, that doesn't make us insulated from storms and crises in life. But if Jesus allows the storms to happen in our lives, then we too must know in faith that there has to be a lesson to be learned throughout this here test. Another thing that got my attention about this question that Jesus asked his disciples was the fact that Jesus didn't ask his disciples if they had faith. You see, Jesus knew that they had faith. Jesus knew that, 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 uh, that the only reason that they were still following him 
was on account of their faith. Remember, these here disciples had left their homes and their families and their ways of life simply on account of their faith. And many of us have lost, and many of us have left our way of life to pursue Jesus on account of our faith as well. But when I think about the question that Jesus asked his, disi his disciples, I believe that's the same question that Jesus is asking us today. Where is your faith? Sometimes we could go into situations with misplaced faith. You see, Jesus' disciples were trained fishermen, experienced at maneuvering in turbulent waters. Yet it was their experience that led them to initially put their faith in their own ability to save them, instead of calling out to Jesus at the first sign of the storm. And the same can be said for us. Sometimes we too misplace our faith as well. Sometimes we put our faith in our own abilities or in the abilities of others or in the ability of something else to save us, only turning to God when all those other plans fail. That there is a classic example of misplaced faith. You see, regardless of how big or small the storms are in our life, Jesus wants us to trust him and only him and to come to him first and foremost. When we can display this kind of faith, then we have the faith that Romans 10 11 tells us that will never be put to shame. When Jesus asks his followers, where is your faith? I can't help but to think about all of the trials and tribulations we face in life that cause our faith to appear weak and void of power. Which is why James, two, uh, James 1 verses 2 through 4 teaches us to count it all joy when we fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. And Paul follows that up in 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 and 11. He says that Christ's grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, the trials and storms that we face in our life aren't always meant to be a testimony as to how strong we truly are. But I think it's quite the opposite. The storms and trials that we face in life are always, uh, 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 the storms and trials that we face in life are always an opportunity for us to trust in God to see how strong he truly is. Another thing that stood out to me as I studied this text was the fact that Sometimes we can let the storms of life cause us to forget that we have life-saving power right there in the boat with us. All we have to do is wake that power up by praying and fasting and believing in faith that God will come through for us in his perfect timing. One benefit of maintaining our faith in Jesus, no matter what our situations may be like, is that we always have hope that better days are right around the corner. Romans 10 and 17 teaches us that faith comes by hearing. So if we want to keep our faith in check when the trials and storms of life occur, that it is imperative that we remain tuned in to the word of God as much as we can. That means that we take extra time to study God's word. That means that we make special time to fast and to pray and to listen to, 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 to gospel music or praise music as much as we can. Also, if we want to maintain our faith in God, then it is important that we develop a habit and lifestyle of praise and worship. You see, when we are able to do that, then we are always able to find something to give God praise about in spite of the storms we face in life. This here will allow us to always be able to, find, to allow the peace of God to rest and abide within each and every one of us as we wait for our Savior to come. We make room for God while we wait on God's promises to be poured out in our lives and in those who come in contact with us. And as I close, I want to remind us that faith is a choice. 
Faith is a choice we choose to make in spite of our feelings. When we choose faith, then we have to be willing to trust God even when it doesn't seem as if the storm will ever end. And finally, faith is the substance that provokes God to move on our behalf. So regardless of the storms that you face in life, the question still remains the same. Where will your faith be at? In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Brother, you come here and speak for us. And even though it's short, we know that it was a good testimony. I'm a little nervous. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know how long to keep y'all. You know? <laughs> He's here to do my memory again. We did chapel last night. I'm just trying to remember this. Thank you, Pastor. How come we don't get those sir? <laughs> Amen, amen. All right, here we got one more song to sing, and I'm going to run back and get the slides. Amen. 